So I thought we'd go through how to get perfect cuts um, on a model when you're doing uh, 3D prints here. Uh, razor sharp lines uh, for registration keys. Um, so this, this character here is obviously, he's, he's very dense. He's got an awful lot of stuff on him. Um, it's not particularly set up for 3D printing. So I'm going to uh, just take off some of the stuff and I'm just going to work on the top half of this guy. Uh, so I'm just going to hide all this stuff here and we'll basically we just work on, on this half. I might even cut some of this off um, just for the purposes of making it that little bit quicker to work on because uh, it's a long tutorial. Uh, so what I'm going to do is once you have everything that you have that you want to put together visible, we need to make that into one mesh. So I'm just going to go down to merge and say merge visible and that's going to create a new sub tool up here when I do that with all of these as one one sub tool here. So with these as one sub tool, uh, we can decide, we can trim this. So I'm going to go to, because I, I want, I don't want to take all of this. Again, I'm trying to reduce this and this whole, normally this would be one solid piece here, but um, so I'm going to hold down control and shift and I'm going to just choose trim curve. And I want to keep the chain around his neck, but I want to cut out as much as possible of the other stuff. So uh, I think something like this would probably be a good uh, starting point. So I'm going to trim that stuff out. So what we do is we cut off his head and we make a registration key up here but the same principle would apply for his arms and lower body, legs, all that kind of stuff. So we have one mesh now but you can see that it's, it's composed of multiple subgroups. Um, ZBrush, uh, when you use DynaMesh, uh, prefers to have fewer subgroups. If you have an awful lot, sometimes it, it even crashes uh, or it just won't do the job. So I'm going to go back to my selection tool and with Control shift I can see, you can see here that these eyes are still separate to, uh, to the eye sockets, the teeth are still separate, the horns, all that kind of stuff. These are still separate objects. We need to combine these. So when we look through the mesh like this, if I was to cut this in half, you can see if I turn on double-sided here, that that eye isn't a separate object that's kind of intersecting inside that geometry. These are still, these are all going to be one watertight mesh. So the way we do that is with DynaMesh. And um, like I said, if you've too many polygroups, this, this is probably okay, but generally it's a good idea just to hit Control W with everything on screen and that will make it one polygroup. The fewer the polygroups, the easier, uh, the more likely that this is going to work. And go down to Geometry. Uh, we want to turn Blur off and we want to project because we do want to keep all of the details here. Uh, and then we need to increase this to a level that's going to give us a good result. This is a little bit trial and error, so find a number, see what it looks like. Um, and hope for the best. So this has maintained the, the resolution that I'm looking for. Um, all of the details are there. Happy enough with this. We can we can continue. I know it's for a 3D print, so it doesn't have to be uh, perfect. But as you can see now, if we hold down Control and Shift and we now look through this, you can see that the inner part of that eyeball is now gone. It's all part of the one mesh. I can hit even Control, Shift and X and grow that by loop by loop. And you can see it's all watertight and one single solid mesh. So now we want to cut it apart and we need to cut it into, into separate pieces. Um, you can see uh, even though some parts are hanging off this it's still it's still going to work. So I'm going to cut off his head here, off with his head, <laughs> uh, and we need to make a, a cut through his head. Now we could do it along um, a line or an area that you know if you had some armor like the band we had on his on his uh, bicep over here you could actually make the, the cut along there but because this is going to be such a razor sharp cut that we're going to do here uh, I actually don't really mind so I'm going to hold down control and shift again and we'll change to a slice curve with the slice curve I'll hold down control and shift and if you tap alt once it will allow you to put a bend into that curve so with Control and Shift now still held down, I can also press the space bar and move this to a place um, that I want. So I'm just going to put it here just to pick a place basically. And that's just going to slice through that mesh and create a perfect line through here. And then it's going to give us two separate polygroups, one for the top and one for the bottom. If you're struggling to see these colors, I'm just going to turn off the line here and you can see these are the two, uh, the areas that it's cut. So I don't mind that it's cutting through through this. Um, I would be maybe a little bit more careful if I was doing this for reels, but for the purposes of a demonstration, it's fine. So we have two objects and they're perfectly cut, but there's holes on them. So if I control shift click on this one and again, 
you can see that the other guy has a, a hole in it as well. So these aren't actually 3D printable. We need to fill in those holes and then create a registration key between them. So the way to do that is to first off, we want to split the two groups. So I'm just going to hit group split, say OK. And we now have uh, the head and the body as two separate pieces. So if we just work on the head first, I can take this. And all I want to do with this really is to go down to modify topology uh, underneath geometry here and then say close holes. That's going to create a hole or a, a fill for this hole here. Uh, and if I go back to the other sub tool here and hide the head this time and do the exact same thing, geometry, modify topology, and then close holes, that will fill this here. So you can see that this, this is a curved surface and this, you know, it isn't going to be a perfect hole here. It, it feels like these two may not necessarily be aligned. I'm going to select the head here by pressing the down key and show you that and this looks like it's a little bit warped and this one looks like it's a little bit warped so you're like well are we sure that these two are actually aligning on top of each other so i'm going to hit ctrl w to make this one polygroup i'll unhide the head and i'll hide the body so you can see i'm going to also hit ctrl w on this one and then we have two two groups with uh, two objects with two different polygroups just to prove that these are perfectly aligned, I'm going to merge this top one down. I'm going to merge this down. Merge down, say OK. And we now have what looks to be two groups in one object and there's no discernible cut line on this anywhere. So now we want to see inside and make sure that these two are actually aligned. Uh, I'm going to hold down Control and Shift and just drag down the center of our model here just so we can see a slice, a section through it. And you can see here that we're looking at the inside of both the top and the bottom here. If I hit Control Shift at this stage and click on the top, you can see it's going to hide that top. But you can see, and I'll just undo that. Uh, I'll hit Control Shift X to grow our selection a little bit. Just as we go through this, we can see that this top and this bottom, all the way through this, the hole is closed in the exact same way. So at any given stage, we could control shift click on this and you'll see that that was perfectly aligned with the surface underneath. So now we have two perfectly aligned surfaces that we know we can cut through at any given stage. Uh, and I know that the blue surface here is perfectly aligned with that one down here. So we need to create registration keys for this now. And we also, we don't want to use DynaMesh at this stage because we already did use DynaMesh and we don't want to, DynaMesh now, if we were to use it, would create some jaggy lines in between here. And we want to keep this razor sharpness that we have going on. So the next thing we need to do is to create a sample key. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a new tool. Uh, it's going to be Sphere, make it a Polymesh 3D. Scroll down to the bottom, go down to Initialize and hit QCube. F to frame it. So on this, now this, this cube, it just has a little bit too many polygons. I know there aren't many, but this actually has too many polygons. So I'm going to press B, Z, M to access our Z modeler brush. And then holding down Alt, I'm going to remove these inner loops from this. From here, I'm going to turn off perspective with P. And I'm going to use the cog icon here. I've gone into a flat view by just pressing shift uh, just to get to a side view. And I'm going to go to a cog and I'm going to say taper. From here, this top one is going to taper from the top. So as I pull it, this down, it's just going to pull it down like this. And we're going to get this on both sides, which is perfect. I press W again to exit that, to basically accept it. And we now have one, one of our keys. This could be the male or the female, but we need it to be one polygroup. So I'm going to hit control W to make that all one polygroup so the faces are all the same. Now I want to duplicate that. So I'm going to hit Control Shift D. This is going to be the other one. Let's call this one male. I'll rename it to male and rename this one to female. So the female has to be larger than the male because obviously one is inserted into the other. So I'm going to grab the male and I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. If you can't see what's going on, you can just turn on transparent mode and there. Now we can actually see that this fits in inside the other one. I'm going to now take this male and I'm going to push it down a little bit below the line of where the female starts. And maybe we'll extend it a little bit just to get that to line up. If you don't like how this is looking up here, it's, it's 
I mean, it will fit, it's uh, it's not a huge thing. So um, what you can do is you can hold down Control and Alt and drag over these top surfaces. Click on this little icon to go to the center of that and then we can scale these in or out. And that will scale them all uniformly together. So we can get this to be a little bit straighter. I'm gonna re remove my mask and we now have two separate objects. So male, as we see, is smaller and fits inside this female one. You don't have to be perfectly tight on this. There's no, this isn't an exact science for how many millimeters we have. This all depends on the size of your of your model. Obviously, you just want it to be a bit smaller to to um, ensure that it will fit in. Anything, if it's more than this, if it turns out to be a big gap, basically you'll have to fill this with glue. But it's unlikely to be very big uh, unless you're making absolutely enormous prints. So from here, we can turn off transparent mode. And I, I know I want to add both of these on at the same time, but right now, if I click on either of them, they have the same color polygroup. So I want to change that. I'm going to hit Control W on one. And anytime you hit Control W, it will just keep on changing polygroups. So we can just find two colors. That one and that one are fine. Uh, and I'm going to take them now and I'm going to merge this down. So when I merge that down, uh, we may get new polygroups, but at least they're separate polygroups. So at any given stage, I can Control Shift, click on one, to see the other or vice versa. So with those two now selected, we want to create a brush from that. ZBrush likes this to be at the right angle. So whatever angle you're looking at it is the angle that's going to draw it on. So I want to draw this on from this angle here, from the bottom. So I'm going to go to brush. I'm going to say create an insert mesh brush. And I want a new brush. So this is our new, our new key here. Uh, it'll take the name of whatever you have. You could call this keys uh, and instead of male, for example, but uh, that's fine. We'll go back to our model and we now have two perfectly fitting meshes, but we do need to separate them out. So I'm just going to go to groups, uh, sorry, to here and say split and then split these two groups. Uh, and I'll say all is okay. So we have our two objects which are now split. I've renamed them to head and to body uh, and we need to add them in. So I'm going to make the body, the female part, and the head will click into the body. Uh, it could be done either way, it's totally up to you. So I'm just gonna hide the head temporarily. Uh, I'm gonna find a point on this. We have our brush selected. So I'm just gonna click and drag it out uh, until I have a decent size on it. And this is gonna be the female. So I'm going to, uh, did I say this is gonna be the female? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna make this the female. So I'm gonna push this down uh, until it fits inside the body and basically cuts into it uh, a good deal. So this is a good a, a good size and a good placement for me. I'm happy enough with this. So what I need to do, this is going to automatically mask this. Uh, so first thing I need to do now is I need to split these two tools off and then I can choose which one to add to, to male and which one to add to the female part. So because this is automatically masked everything in the background, I immediately just go to split and say split unmasked points. That's going to take these two new keys and make them a new subtool in their own right. Uh, they still, were by, by nature of making them a brush, it gave them all both one polygroup. So I need to auto groups this. It, they are still separate. Um, so if I go down to polygroups and say auto groups, it's going to see that difference and give them two different colors. So every time I hit auto, auto groups, it's going to just give them random colors. As long as I have two separate ones, that's fine. I'll hit Control and Shift on one to hide it from the other one. This is the smaller part, so this is going to be the male. Uh, so I'm going to go back to Subtool and I'm going to say split the hidden one. This is the smaller one, so like I said, we can rename this to male. This is the larger one, we can rename this to female. So we want the female part to be cutting into the body. So I'm going to move it up in the stack using this curved arrow button. I'm going to take the male part and I'm going to move that down in the stack. So it's, it's underneath the head. So basically, if we hide the body now and just look at the head, we, we're going to want the male sac, the male bit to fit from here. And we're going to want the female, we'll do this, to cut into here. So the female right now is not cutting into here. Um, it's just sitting here on top. So the way to do that is to go to live boolean and we make this female a negative mesh. Now, this will happen if you are looking at your polyframes when, when you press Shift F or this button. So, but you'll have to turn this off if you want to see what the result of this will actually be. And this is what it's going to look like. 
This is what it's going to look like when we go down to Boolean and we say make a Boolean mesh. So we don't want to turn dynamic subdivision on, we don't want to use DynaMesh. We literally, we had already DynaMeshed everything, we're happy with this. So all we're going to do is say make Boolean mesh and that's going to create a new sub tool up here for us. So I hit that button, it's going to look through this list and say what should I be adding or subtracting. This is the only other one that's visible, the eye icons are off. So we'll be subtracting this from this and it'll give us a new sub tool which we now have here and this is it. So this sub tool is still watertight and uh, I can control shift drag on this and you can see uh, as I increase the size on this there is no there's no gap here basically and this is these are joined together this is 3d printable so I need to go back to my original body here I now no longer need this head uh, so I'm going to or this body rather so we can either put that into a folder and just hide it or we can just hide it like this and I'm going to take the head now and now I need to do the opposite for the head I need to do the live boolean where we add the two of these together so live boolean is still on this is on and we can just hit um, live boolean mesh again to create another one and that'll create a new sub tool up here that's it here and again this is already watertight this is 3d printable and we could be doing this straight from the get-go. Like Control shift x will just increase and we can see through our mesh here if we turn on double sided that uh, this is basically watertight. Control shift to bring everything back. So this head we know will fit on this body. Um, just as proof of it, I, ha I have the head selected. I can append the body that we created. Uh, these are the two now. Uh, this head, if I, if I view it on its own, and I'm just going to do this temporarily, I'm going to go into this mode and I'm going to hit Control W just to make this one polygroup. And I'll do the same on the body down here, Control W, just to make this one polygroup, just to make it easier to see what's going on. I'm going to turn off the line fill here so we can see that this is this color and this is this color. And if I merge this down temporarily, uh, we can do this just as a kind of, this is a test just to show that this is actually a perfect, I'm going to merge it down. We now have one sub tool. So if I was to look through here by basically slicing through here with control and shift, we're looking through the middle here and you can see both of these line up absolutely perfectly to the point that there is Z fighting uh, on the interface here to actually uh, for zebras to try to see which one should it show. So if I hide one, we can see the other one is still there. If I hide that one, that's perfect. As we control shift X to increase this, uh, to go through our, our model here, we'll eventually get to the point where we see the um, the registration keys. And if it's not happening fast enough, I'll basically just find it myself. It's somewhere in the middle here. There we go. So Control Shift X will just increase that. And as we're going through here, you can see that that male bit actually fits inside uh, the female part in there. So this is, these are going to align and print perfectly. Cool. So yeah, this is how to get absolutely razor sharp, no thin lines, no dynamesh, jagginess along the edges here for your 3D prints are going to align and they should print out and join up nicely. Hope this helps and don't forget to subscribe for other content. All right, bye.